Hi everyone. In the last class, we have discussed about multiple linear functionals defined on a Banach algebra and their relation with the maximum ideals uh, in a Banach algebra. Today, uh, we are going to discuss about characterization of multiple linear functionals, uh, which is known as the glesson kahane jelasgo theorem uh, or the GKZ theorem. So, let us uh, state the theorem. Let A be a unital Banach algebra and phi be a linear map from A to C. Then we can say that phi is multiplicative if and only if phi of 1 is 1 and phi of a is non-zero for every a in j a. That means uh, if phi maps unit element of a into unit element of c and invertible elements of uh, a into invertible elements of c, then we can conclude that phi is multiplicative. And in fact, we have shown uh, in the earlier lectures that Whenever phi is multiplicative, we have shown that phi of 1 is 1 and it sends invertible elements of uh, domain into invertible elements of codomain. So, this is already we have shown. Now, let us uh, try to look at the other way. Assume that phi of 1 is 1 and phi of a is non-zero for every a in g of a. We want to show that uh, phi is multiplicative. Okay. Instead of that, we show that kernel phi is, a, is an ideal. Then we can conclude the proof. So, let us take n as kernel phi. So, the claim is the following n is an ideal. Okay. So, to prove this uh, result, we divide the proof into different steps. The first step is phi is bounded. Okay. So, let us start with some element A in A. So, there are two cases where A is in N and where A is not in N. So, first let us look at A is not in N. So, then we have phi of A is non-zero. Hence, we can say that 1 minus A by phi of A. This is phi of 1. So, phi of 1 minus A by phi of A is uh, 0. So, this we can say that it is in n. So, this is not an invertible element. So, we have the following result. If norm a is strictly less than 1, this implies that 1 minus a is in g of a. So, this can be stated uh, as follows. If 1 minus a is uh, not invertible, then norm of a is bigger than or equal to 1. So, therefore, we can say that so therefore, norm of 1 minus 1 minus a by phi of a is bigger than or equal to 1 or we can say that norm of a is bigger than mod phi of a. So, we have shown that mod phi of a less than or equal to norm a for every a in, uh, a in a but not in n. If a is in n, then we can say that phi of a is 0. So, this is less than or equal to norm of a. So, therefore, we can say that mod phi of a is less than or equal to norm a for every a in a. So, from this we can say that uh, norm of 
phi is less than or equal to 1. But as phi of 1 is 1, we, we can conclude that norm of phi is 1. So we have shown that phi is bounded and norm of phi is 1. Let us look at step 2. Whenever a is in n, we show that a square is also in n. Okay. So let us start with a in n uh, with norm of a less than or equal to 1. Now define a function f from c into c by f of z as summation n equal to 0 to infinity phi of a power n z power n by n factorial for all z in c. So let us call this as equation 1. So our aim is to show that f is entire 0 less than mod f of z p less than e power mod z f of 0 is 0 that is equal to f dash 0 equal to 0. If we can show this, these uh, results we can conclude that f is a constant function 1 from a known result from complex analysis. So let us look at this part. So we have mod, uh, mod phi of z a power n is less than norm phi into norm a power n. This is norm a over power n. So this is less than or equal to 1 for all n. So we can conclude that mod f of z is less than or equal to by the comparison test we can say that the series uh, is convergent at every point of z uh, at every point of complex at every complex number that means f is entire and mod f of z is less than or equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity uh, no, mod z power n by n factorial because uh, modulus of phi, power, phi of a power n less than or equal to 1. So from this, uh, this is nothing but e power mod z. Now if you rewrite uh, uh, f of z is can be written as phi of summation n equal to 0 to infinity a power n z power n by n factorial. This is phi of exponential of a z for every z in c. So exponential function uh, does not vanish at any point so we can say that so from this we can say that mod f of z is always bigger than 0 for every z in c. So we have shown uh, these two claims and if we want to show that f of 0 f of 0 is 0 and f dash we have f of 0 is 0 and if you look at f dash z so f dash z is you can say it is phi of So, 1 plus a z plus by 2 factorial. So, derivative of that. So, this is nothing but phi of a plus a square 2 a square z by 2 factorial so on ok so this is nothing but phi f dash at 0 
we will get pi of a but a we have taken uh, from n so this is 0 okay so now we use a no, well known result from complex analysis if f from c to c is entire f of 0 is 0 that is f dash at 0 and 0 less than mod f of z is strictly less than e power mod z for every z in c then we can conclude that f of z equal to 1 for every z in c okay now using this result we can show that in fact we can conclude that f of z is therefore f of z equal to 1 for every z in c so if you write down what is f of z in the series form see this is phi of So when n equal to 0, you will get phi of 1 is 1. So 1 plus you will get 1 plus phi of a, phi of a square, z square by 2 factorial, phi of a cube, z cube by 3 factorial, so on, equal to 1. So this implies phi of a, z plus phi of a square z square by 2 factorial plus phi of a cube z cube by 3 factorial so on this is 0 but anyway phi of a is 0 this also become 0 so from this we can say that phi of a square z square by 2 factorial plus phi of a cube z cube by 3 factorial plus so on this is 0 phi of a square is 0 this completes the proof of uh, the second step phi of a square is 0 whenever a is in n so that means a square is in n ok so let us, let us look at step 3 we want to show that a b plus b a is in n whenever a is in n and b is in a okay so let us let us take a b from a then at a later stage we take a from n then we have a minus phi of a into 1 this is n b minus phi of b into 1 this is n so let us write a1 let us define a minus phi of a into 1 and b1 b minus phi of b into 1 therefore we can write a as a1 plus phi of a into 1 b as b1 plus phi of b into 1 now we can say that with a1 b1 are coming from n now if you look at a b a b is nothing but a1 b1 plus phi of b a1 phi of a b1 plus phi a phi b okay from this we can say that phi of a b is phi of a1 b1 plus phi of b 
phi of a1 plus phi of a phi of b1 plus phi of a phi of b into phi of 1 that is 1. So from this we can say that now a1 is coming from n and b1 is coming from n so these two terms get cancelled so we get get that phi of a b we get phi of a1 b1 plus phi a phi b now if you write b equal to a this implies phi of a square is phi of a1 square plus phi of a whole square now a1 is coming from n and we have shown that a1 square is also in in step 2 so this is 0 by step 2 so we have shown that therefore phi of a square is phi of a whole square okay this is for uh, for every in a now we want to show that whenever a is in n b is in a a b plus b a is also in n now let us write so write substitute a plus b in place of a in equation 2 so then we get phi of a plus b whole square is nothing but phi of a plus phi of b whole square so this implies phi of a square plus phi of b square plus phi of a b plus phi of b a this is phi of a square plus phi of b square plus phi plus 2 phi a phi b so this implies but we know that phi of a square is phi of a whole square uh, by 2 so this implies phi of a b plus b a equals to so these two so 2 times phi of phi of b so let us call this is equation 3 now if a is in n if a is in n and b is in a then by 3 we get phi of a b plus b a is 0 or we can say that a b plus b a is in n so whenever a is in n b is in a we have shown that a b plus b a is in n now from this we can say that so again a into look at this element b a b plus b a b into a this is n so let me call this as equation 4 now i am applying equation 4 to the elements a and b a b i am taking this as one element okay now we want to show, our claim is to show that a b minus b a is also in n whenever a is coming from n and b is coming from a so we have a, a b minus b a whole square and a b plus b a whole square we can write two times a b a b plus b a b 
into a now again a is in n and b is in a implies we know that ab plus ba is in n so this is in n by earlier step and this is also in n so from this we can say that if you apply phi both sides we can say that phi of ab minus ba whole square is zero that means we can say that ab minus ba is in n okay so we know that uh, ab plus ba ab plus ba ab minus ba both are in n whenever a is in n and b is in a now from this we can say that their difference this implies their difference is nothing but 2 ba is in n or we can say that ba is in n whenever a is in n b is in a okay now using the same uh, trick we can show that similarly we can show that a b is in n whenever a is in and b is in n. so from this we can only conclude that so n is therefore n is a two sided ideal in a or okay. ideal okay okay so kernel phi is an ideal but uh, we have shown that uh, kernel phi automatically follows that it is a maximal so hence we can say that kernel phi is a maximal ideal hence phi phi is multiplicative okay so this completes the proof of glesson kahane and jerasgo so i'll stop here thank you very much